Uh, we do not advise people to travel out of their residential community, and uh, we are putting in place a massive uh, testing. And uh, from 8 o'clock this morning, we have initiated the eighth round of massive testing. And for each round of the nucleic acid testing, we could cover 170,000 people. And in order to guarantee the quality of NAT, we have dispatched uh, laboratory capacities in Shenzhen and Guangzhou so as to add to the capacity of our NAT. And today, we are just visiting one of the NAT laboratory, transported here from Guangzhou. Uh, it carries a a uh, grocer's name, which is the Falcon Air Inflated Laboratory. It has a daily capacity of more than 60,000. So why is it called Falcon? Uh, what are its advantages? So today, we're going to get to know the answers. And may I first invite the CTO of the um, Falcon Laboratory. So can you say hi to our viewers? I'm the Chief Operations Manager, Yu Dongyang, of the Air Inflated uh, Laboratory. I'm mainly providing technical support to the laboratory. Well, nice to meet you. I heard that it was uh, constructed on December the 2nd, and the next day it was put into operation. So tell me something about it. So we received the notice on uh, November the 30th, and our government supported um, this work uh, very uh, well, and uh, we received also a lot of support from the Manjuli uh, city. And they sent a uh, cargo plane, and we just transported these uh, facilities here. So the construction process took roughly 16 hours. And this includes the installation and adjustments of all the facilities. And then we conducted the experiments so as to guarantee that everything can go on very well. So within 24 hours, we were able to uh, take in samples and all the technical staff we were ready. So that is why on December the 3rd, we have officially kicked off the testing. So how come you call it Falcon? Why you call it the Falcon Air Inflated Laboratory? What are its advantages? So we are calling Falcon because we are just like a hunter and we have to be quite uh, meticulous in our capacity of identifying virus. As you know, COVID-19 has truly uh, shifted the way people live and so we call ourselves the Falcon because we hope that we can have the eyes of the ego that can see clearly those almost invisible virus and also, it's a prefabricated, it can be uh, torn apart, so we can very quickly establish a PCR laboratory. So may I ask you, from December the 3rd, you have been taking in a lot of samples, and what is the procedures that you are following these days, and uh, how quick can you generate the result of the PCR? So we have uh, 80 people working on two shifts, which means that we are running 24-7. So we are ready at any time accepting samples. And we can take the samples at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, by around 9 o'clock, we will be able to receive a lot of samples. Uh, we have uh, reception people. We have testing staff. We also have on-site management staff. When the samples arrive, we can arrange or assign a task based on the amount of the tasks. If we have a huge quantity of samples, then we can simply add more staff to that. And we have very familiar and skilled uh, medical staff, and they are from 10 different companies from all over the country. Um, prior to coming to uh, Manjuli, and they have the experience of fighting the disease in different localities in China. So the assignment of staff or human resources 
hinges upon the quantity of samples that we take. We have 130 uh, facilities and equipment that can quickly analyze the samples, so we have every confidence to ensure the maximum efficiency. So you said that you are from all over the country. Uh, we know that we have uh, 80 staff that is currently working on this uh, Falcon uh, site. So tell us about the working shift of those people and how many teams do you have? So as for work shifts, we have many different modules. To ensure the uh, successful running of this uh, center, we have uh, testing people, we have um, analytical people, we have uh, equipment maintenance staff, and we also have uh, administrative uh, staff. So in terms of uh, testing, we start the day at around 9 o'clock, so we basically adjust the number of staffing according to the quantity of samples that we take in so as to guarantee that there is this uh, correlation between the task and the human resources. So right now I can see five very big um, modules. Uh, all these five modules, they are connected. And can you tell me what are the functions of each and every one of those modules? So this is the five-in-one module. So what they can do is that they can share one sampling room. Uh, on each side, we have extended functional areas. So this is basically ensuring that all the different modules can work at the same time. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for your very detailed introduction. And as was introduced, that uh, different modules are connected, and you can enter in those uh, laboratories if you are wearing those uh, protective suits. All right, thank you very much. And now we're going to walk in those modules. All right, now we're going to get in. So this is the disinfection room. So here we have the head of this module, who is going to tell us more about what's inside. Good morning, my name is uh, Xu Meng Yao. I'm from uh, Heilongjiang. I'm a technician here. Uh, over the past uh, two years, I have been doing NAT, and I'm the head of uh, Module 1. So you're the head of Module 1. So what is your work responsibility here? So each and every day, I analyze the samples. I formulate the results. I also coordinate the work between Module 1, Module 2, and Module 3. So tell us what is the working process here. So how many hours are you working every day, and how many shifts do you have? So we work 12 hours a day, and we have some breaks during the day. So what we do is that Module 1 is preparing for those uh, uh, solutions. Uh, module 2 is basically responsible for testing, and uh, Module 3 is for analysis. So what do you mean by preparing the solutions? So this is Module 1. This is basically uh, preparing the solutions. So this is what our staff is doing right now. Uh, module 1 has to supply the use of two other modules. All right, now we can walk along the corridor. Uh, so what is the function of this module? So this is module two. It's basically taking the samples, and all the samples are transported inside here from a window that is outside, and then it will be further transported to the next module. So what they are busy with, so they are preparing the solutions for the NAT. All right, now let's come to the next module. So to my knowledge, and this is the extended area for PCR, and this is also the area that you are in charge of. And tell us more about this module. So we have a lot of the samples transported here from module two. And right now, my colleagues, they are doing some uh, preparatory work. We have to do a lot of uh, filing and registration. And then we need to 
put those samples on the facility, and after analysis, we can quickly get the results. So this is basically telling us, do you get a positive or a negative? Yes. So you will also be relying on a computer? Yes, of course. So how long does each module work every day? From the beginning to the very end, because uh, for module one, that is basically preparing the solutions, and that is very fast. For module two, uh, this is simply abstract, uh, attract, uh, abstracting the solutions, and that is uh, very quick. That is uh, 10 minutes for each batch of the samples. Thank you very much. So where are you from? I'm from uh, Harbin of uh, Heilongjiang province. So have you uh, adapted to this uh, work pace here? Yes, because uh, where I come from, Harbin is very cold, and we basically have the same temperature or climate. All right, thank you very much for your introduction, and thank you very much for working for Manjoli. So we have visited a part of the functions inside this laboratory, and now let's take a look at those uh, core functions. Now let's take a look at how those uh, logistic staff is doing. And we have a uh, IT a person from the Falcon Air and Flight Laboratory. And now, please, so can you give us some self introduction to start with? Good morning. My name is Zheng Haichao. I'm the uh, IT. Uh, I'm the IT uh, responsibility uh, person for this uh, laboratory. So what is your main responsibilities? So as you have already learned that we have uh, 80 people working on this uh, NAT campaign, and we have more than 100 fully automatic uh, equipments. We have a data capacity of uh, 60,000 samples, so massive Nucleic acid testing like this requires high efficient logistic support. So that is why we have high efficient, low latency, uh, super connected 5G uh, special network. And this is simply to guarantee the immediate release of the results so that all those the recipients or those testees, they can receive the test result very quickly. So you are giving technical support to this laboratory. And so what is your day like? So on an average day, we have to first do a routine check about our network. Is there any jams of the network? So we just need to make sure that we have very smooth internet connection. So how many shifts are you working every day? So we are working 12 hours every day from 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the evening. So we are running two shifts. So we also have some IT people behind you. And tell us what are those people for? So you can see this uh, very small rectangular uh, cube, and that is for the 5G uh, PTE, and that is to guarantee immediate release of the results. So where are you originally from? I'm from Zhengzhou of uh, Henan province. So at the end of this interview, do you have any uh, messages for those people in Manjoli? Well, I hope that this uh, wave of the epidemic can, can end soon so that Manjoli can quickly recover. All right, thank you very much. I wish you every success in your work. Thank you very much. So from the introduction of the IT support, we know that the people working at the front line, they are basically for the testing of those samples. But the IT logistics support is also very important. And let me show you a map. Let me show you a figure. So the horizontal line is the uh, 
daily working hours, and uh, the uh, vertical line is the newly increased or confirmed cases every day, and those are blue bars, and those are the newly confirmed cases on a daily basis. And also, we have those uh, daily added asymptomatic cases, and you can see that uh, since the 27th of uh, November, since we identified three asymptomatic, asymptomatic cases, then towards the end of uh, November, we had the peak of incremental cases. So ever since that, the daily increases have been maintained at roughly 50 cases. So yesterday, it's had 30 new cases. So right now, it's still at a very severe stage. So that is why we say that it's crucial that we engage in this uh, massive citywide nucleic acid test from Beijing, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou. There are three NAT laboratories dispatched to Manzoli. And so we just had a brief visit of the Falcon Air Inflated Laboratory, which is having a daily testing capacity of more than 60,000 samples. And we also have the lab from Beijing and the Shenzhen. So three laboratories combined, they have a daily capacity of more than 110,000 samples. And also the Manzoli city itself also has its own capacity. So if we combine all those capacities together, on an average day, we can complete uh, testing more than 200,000 samples. And uh, over the past three days, the daily capacity has been maintained at more than 170,000. So with all these capacities and facilities, then we are able to ensure that the test result can be released on the same day of the test. And I have just learned from the Manjuli government that they have further streamline the procedures, they will focus on key population groups, they also improve the nucleic acid testing mechanism. Going forward, they are going to step up with this effort so as to ensure the smooth conduction of the NAT campaign. So this is the end of today's uh, visit. There is no winner that will not be uh, put behind us, and let's hope that this wave can end as soon as possible.